catch me if I haven't talked to you at all. <laughs> we'll start the breaks. We'll try to have regular breaks because I know when I go to seminars, I, uh, I kind of zone out after 45 minutes to an hour and start staring at the city. I hope that you'll take the opportunity here to ask questions whenever you want to. I got this invitation from Carlene a month ago, and as it happened, we had completed a strategic planning session, and a lot of the issues that she brought up were on my mind. So Lisa and I went to work and started just putting things together. We've never done this before, so have mercy. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of been exciting. We've been at this for 28 years now, and I got into it completely by accident. Just to show you how parents can develop. Uh, I was a parent. I had never gone within four and a half miles of the gym when my wife said we have to buy the gym. Why <laughs> won't you? <laughs> and she said, Megan's gym. She has to have a place to practice. And I said, practice what? <laughs> she said, gymnastics. That's the first time I knew that my daughter, my oldest daughter, was taking gymnastics. <laughs> I had lived going up and down in the center of Seattle in the banking community for eight years. And Megan had grown up without my paying any attention at all. I was really a out in the zone father. Uh, but we did buy the gym on, uh, we bought it from the IRS. They had seized the gym and they gone bankrupt because they stopped paying their taxes. And typical, you know, small gym, 121 kids, and uh, out in the back of a warehouse, down 19 steps across a puddle of water. And there it was. <laughs> so uh, we didn't have much to start with, but it was apparent to me that somebody would just answer the phone. You could build it up. And so I would get off work, grab Megan, we'd go out to, she would practice, and I would answer the phone. And that's how we got going. And sure enough, people started signing up. So we're going to talk a lot about answering the phone today because so many gyms don't. And it's just the beginning of your relationship with your customers if you do answer the phone and get that started right away. But I digress. We're going to start. <laughs> We're actually going to start with talking to customers because in the 28 years that we've done this, and I should say that I had some professional experience when I got in banking was to start non-bank businesses, finance companies, computer companies, uh, venture firms, mortgage banks, and all that kind of stuff. But it was about the start of things. I was not the operator. I was the guy who would go out and assess where we could enter the market find the people, find the staff, build the systems, get everything in place and turn it over to the operating company. So the gym to me was just like that. It was practically a startup. 121 kids, we had a home-built floor, it had a home-built hall, we had one real beam and a phone. And you can go a long way from there if you're diligent and persistent. So um, we're going to start with talking to the customers that we have because you need to resell yourselves on a consistent basis. They need to be convinced that there is value in what you're doing. And you're talking to three of them. You have the gymnast, who has a nice personal relationship with the coach. And I'll generally say her because about 75% of our kids are hers. And then you have the spouse that brings the child, usually the mom, and then you have the person at home who's wondering why we're writing a $200 check for Susan just to play out on the floor. And you have to provide value to all those people in some way. So, Lisa is our goddess of registration. <laughs> she has the title of director of registration and sales, yes. And she supervises the registrars, and we call them registrars, they're not the office manager. They're not the girl at the desk. They're not whoever is going to answer the phone. We think it's essential to have two things to run a gym. You have a gymnastics staff and a sales staff and a registration staff, sales and registration. So when we open a new gym, we always have those two key people in place. She heads all the sales and registration people. And she's going to talk to you about talking to the customers you already have. And I'll be right here to chime in as necessary. Then I will talk to you a little bit about getting new customers. So Lisa, take it away. Thank you. And again, if you do have questions or comments in the middle, 
try to beat up on a young teenager to get what they want, but they don't do that with someone who's mature. And Barb will often say, Barb was the registrar when I first started, so I will defer a lot to her because she trained and taught me everything I know about being a registrar. But she will often say, oh, it's okay, the customer won't yell me, I'll just pull out my little gray hairs. And it really it works. All of a sudden, they trust and believe in what you're saying. Again, we are the first person the customer sees. We, they want somebody at the front desk who knows their children, knows them by name, knows the parents, knows what's happening in their lives. I can ask, you know, how was your trip to Hawaii? I know you guys were just gone for a week. That also helps to ensure retention. Families will continue to come to your gym because they feel like no matter what is happening in their day, they're going to walk in, they're going to get a smile from you, they're going to get some acknowledgement that they matter. And oftentimes, parents are having a hard day. I know, they come in, the hair's bedraggled, they've got, you know, four cups of coffee in their hand, they've got kids pulling on them as they're walking in the door. They just need somebody, they need an adult to have a conversation with. <laughs> and throughout this presentation, you're going to hear this theme that you need to, uh, we would recommend that you approach what you're doing as a professor of gymnastics, as a professional. You're not a babysitter, you're not just taking up time for the parents to do it so they can pick it up. You are trying to work toward a professional status and goal. You're providing a, not only a service, but a, a human value to what you're doing, both for the kids and the parents. And on that note, if the customer, if the customers see that the front desk is valued by the company, right, that will help them believe that they are being valued by the company, by the owner. We want to be able to show all the way down the line that the owners are grateful that you're here, and we want to do whatever we can to keep you here and to keep your kids happy in the gym. When I started out, I think one of the biggest things that we ran across was that the gymnastics people did not respect what they were doing. It was just something until they got a real job. <laughs> we have worked hard to provide a career for gymnastics people, and both on the sales side and on the gymnastics side, because we think it's a place where you can have fun, make money, and do a really valuable service for everybody you touch. What are your hours of operation like? Are you open till late? Mm -hmm. Monday through Thursday, we're open 9 to 9. Friday, we're open 9 to 6. Saturday, we're open 9 to 2. And Sunday, we're open 9 to 12. Now, that's just for classes. Saturdays and Sunday afternoons and evenings, we also do birthday parties. Is your office open while you have birthday parties going on? Uh, yes and no. There is not a registrar, but whoever is in charge of birthday parties, whoever that supervisor is, is trained to be a partial registrar. So they can still answer the phones, they can still sell the guitars, they can still enroll kids in classes, take payments for extra birthday party kids, things like that. So the downtimes in the office, I mean, yeah. we're a smaller gym, yeah. So the downtimes and the, I mean, it's really hard to have people sitting there doing nothing. Oh, so I always tell you the last time I did nothing. <laughs> yeah. But you've got, you know, much more quicker moving gym mm -hmm. than what we have. We have a very limited mark for the rural area, but we have hours more. So I'm just wondering, will you hit someone's hesitation on financially, you know, coach raising six kids, you know, offering costs per hour, you can see the dollars. Absolutely. The administration person sitting there, the money is Absolutely, absolutely. Because it's expensive to have a registrar. But, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you are unreachable, the customer is going to move on to the next gym. They're going to move on to the next activity, to soccer, French, taekwondo, whatever. Having somebody there who can answer the phones are only going to be a financial burden for a very short period of time before they start getting more kids enrolled and they're going to start paying for themselves. And we'll go into a little bit more about that later. The other thing, People don't leave messages. I mean, how often do you guys call a business and actually leave a message? I very rarely do. I am busy. I have things to do. This is when I'm ready to talk to you. And if you're not ready to talk to me, I will either move on to somebody else or I will call you back later at my convenience, which means that if I'm a parent looking to enroll in a class, if I don't leave a message and I call you back three weeks from now and I finally remember again that I was supposed to be calling you, that spot that I was wanting to sign up for now could be full. And now you've lost a sale entirely. 
Every phone call, and we really believe this, every phone call is an opportunity to sell your gym. And we'll talk more about cross-selling and cross-promotions, but every single time that phone rings, you have a chance to get a child signed up in a class, book a birthday party. If a child is already in classes, you can ask them about indoor playground or parents' night out, or any other activities that you guys might have.
coach then is being put into a position of financial authority, and we don't want to make them do that. All we want to do is allow the coach to make a great, amazing class, and then we will take on the burden of upholding our policies, or dealing with scholarships, or dealing with makeups, or whatever the case may be. Let me expand on that, because yeah. one of the biggest values that you're bringing to the table for the parent is your relationship with the child. This is not a McDonald's play space that you're running. It's not a one-off trampoline bouncing joint. You are building a relationship, and you want to have the coaches have the time to develop that. So, for in our case, there's 15 minutes between each rotation. Not, not each rotation, but each session, each class. So, a class runs for an hour, 15 minutes. The coaches aren't supposed to disappear and go play in the kitchen. They're supposed to talk to the parents. And that's the point at which we can tell the parents what we're up to, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, whether or not the child is making the corrections or we're making the corrections. This is where we establish a relationship with that second customer that we were talking about earlier. So we're already, the kids will latch on to the coach, but you want to latch on to the parent as well. Absolutely. Some of the other things that registrars do, we keep track of all of the accounts. So if a customer comes up, I know exactly what they paid, why they paid, when their next payment is due, how much that next payment is going to be. Um, we want to try and make sure that they are feeling comfortable and confident because they are giving us a lot of money. We do 13 week sessions during the school year, which we'll talk more about in just a little bit. But 13 weeks is a long time. That means that they are paying us 195 to $330 every session. We want to make sure that they feel comfortable, that they know exactly where their money is going and when it's going to be due. Also, registrars are to know all policies and procedures. So not only do we know what the policies are, we know why they're in existence. And we are able to explain what they are, why they are a benefit to the company, and why they're a benefit to the parent. Uh, for example, one of our policies are no credits or refunds. We want to be able to explain to them why we have that policy and how it's going to benefit their child. Um, oh, and nobody on the floor until they pay. Absolutely. When we started out, <laughs> we would always say, oh, pay us next week. Pay us then. Pay us when you get around to it. Well, that really didn't work. So now we have no receivables. We don't spend any time collecting money because nobody's on the floor until they're paid. Now, there's still a few mothers who drop the child off and expect the child to just wander on the floor and be taken care of. But we actually take the child, hand them a phone, call your mother, tell her, Mom, I can't get gymnastics because I'm not registered. In 20 minutes, you will have your money yeah. as soon as she can get back in. Do you guys do a monthly payment or do you have everybody pay for their session up front? Up front. For the whole session. For the whole session. We do have a couple of people that we allow to be on split payment, um, which means that we take their credit card and on these three dates, we are going to run X amount of money. We try not to do that very often. Um, we do it for the families that have got two or three kids and their bills are, you know, $1,000 every 13 weeks. That's a lot of money. But it never fails. There's always at least one or two people, I swear, every session who they have to give us their credit card. Doesn't mean there's money on the card. Yeah. So we're running payments, yeah. we're calling. I don't want to be a bill collector. That is not. Hi there. That is not something I'm interested in.
for our market, we've adjusted to the opposite. Can I ask though, how much money are you spending on a staff to try and find? We yeah, on salary. Exa exactly. Yes. And I mean, if the family is. Oh, yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Yes. And I really need to do this because you don't have a lot of extra time. When we were 300 kids and I was a registrar, I did not have time to be laundry club and say, you know, we need your check. <laughs> Population is an issue. It's a bigger issue than just your gym not doing a good job selling your oh, yeah. product. Yeah. So I mean, you guys are facing a completely different scenario than a lot of others, especially lower mainland. You, you're competing against each other, but there's certainly not necessarily an issue population that you're that you're losing. You're losing people out of your your own community. That's a completely different yeah. um, process in which in which you need to. Address. I will say this: that when we change and. Uh, got it going is when I first became aware of the Mothers Network. Because before I did this, I had one gym where the mothers would tell each other, You don't have to pay, they won't buy it. You know, they were talking. And so when we did change it, it wasn't but three months for the whole Mothers Network changed the word. The word was now you have to pay to be there. And you can't just drop the child off anymore. It gets around so fast. And what about that parent who comes back and the child calls? Comes yeah. in and says, You want to talk money you're talking to me, not my kid, don't put them in that yeah, spot. I'm sorry, you did not register your child, she can't go on the floor. We face up to you. We changed yeah. ours we to cancel the registrations in two days if they don't come in and pay. It gets made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. They give them two we days to come in and put the checks on file, credit card on file. Make an arrangement with you, right? Yes, they have to make some kind of payment arrangement. Yeah. So it can be our arrangements are I'll pay you on pay and I'll pay you next week. They have a day on checks. Okay. You're taking over there. We have to have checks, and for us, it just automatically is canceled. No questions asked. I'll get to that a little bit more. Absolutely, because that's a really big one. My other, my other question to you was: Yes, you're in a diminished population, and you want to get kids in the gym. But if you're not getting paid for those kids, what's the point of having them in the gym besides doing a service to the children? Right? Oh, but you're yeah. not doing your business. You get paid, but it's not the <coughs> process we're spending too much time on. It's, there's nobody there that's had a free ride for the three months, really. Nobody. But we still have these people <coughs> coming <coughs> after. <coughs> so, yeah. But we've them. adjusted because of our need for the kids as opposed to doing the hard line stuff that we used to do. But we just found for our market, we couldn't do that to people. We lose too many people. If we weren't more flexible in their payment schedule or how they pay, they walk. So we do they them. have other activities in the area that they can do? Well, in a small town, we should be the biggest thing in town because there's no soccer or hockey. So in one way, we got this. No, you got this. We don't get that. Everybody should be there. About 18,000. Oh. It's our kid base. Whoa. That's got really As a rule of thumb, if you want to make it a long-going business, at least in our country, you need about 100,000 people. We've been running 23 years, though, so we've made a long term business. I don't think we're going to lose it all. I'm just saying we've had to adjust with the time. And the numbers will come up again. But right now, it takes longer to get university degree, longer to get a house, longer to get married. So things are having to do it. So we're in that waiting late years until those kids are having, or these young people are having kids, and we'll grow our market again. Well, let's, let's, let's keep this story going here. No, that's okay. Um, the last thing that your registrars are required to do are, is to know all of the ins and outs of every single program that you have. Again, promoting that cross-selling, right? Allowing the families to know what our different options are, knowing based on age, skill level, personality, you are able to help them find the right program. And we have a lot of programs at our gym. So when I'm training somebody, I mean, it takes us hours to go through all of the ins and outs of every single program that we offer. Um, talking about coaches and knowing their personalities. This is our coach wall. We have got anywhere between 20 and 30 coaches at any one of our locations. So it's really important for you to know their personalities, know what their teaching styles are, know how long they've been coaching. When a parent calls you and wants to get signed up for a class, not only do you need to know the age of the child and the skill of the child to help them get into the right class, but also what is the personality of the child? 
if you match up a super shy child with a coach that is extremely loud, extremely exuberant, it can be really off-putting for the child. Some shy kids really respond to that, but that's when you start to ask those questions of the parent. If you put your, a really shy child in with a coach that's super loud, they're going to have a bad experience. They're going to think that their coach is really awful. The coaches aren't awful. They just, the personalities just didn't mesh with the child. So being able to know enough about your coaches to be able to really sell them to the parent and help them find an appropriate spot is really important. Um, talking about cost, yeah, it costs money to have a registrar, absolutely. But the benefit of having somebody specifically up there to answer your phones, to enroll kids in your classes, to take payments, to sell leotard, all of those things are going to help increase your revenue dramatically. We, excuse me, take all of those complaints away from the owners, allow the owners to run the gym. We take the complaints again away from the coaches. We, when I first started, okay, I started out in a really small gym, sort of like this. We were in, it was in Jamestown, North Dakota. I think we had maybe 200 kids in our gym. They were all team. I think there were about 20 rec kids, and the rec kids were, mm, rec kids, right? <laughs> Rec kids were just poo pooed upon. It was all about the team kids. But the owner was a wonderful coach. She was a terrible business person. She had a parent come in two or three times a week to do a little bit of bookkeeping. She was constantly trying to chase families down, trying to get paid. Eventually, her business went under. The last three months I was there, I was asked not to take a paycheck because she couldn't afford to pay rent and. Do you want to Small children. Oh, right. children. Right. <laughs> um, so it is not it's not that Connie was a bad coach. She was a wonderful coach and our team kids did exceptionally well. But she oftentimes had to pay the competition fees for the kids because she couldn't get the parents to pay. She couldn't pay her staff. We want to try and prevent stuff like that from happening. Um, talking about communicating with your current customers. By keeping your current customers informed, it's going to save you as a registrar a ton of time. We assume that parents are going to miss most information that we put out. So we try to put it out as many different ways as possible. We want to minimize phone calls and emails to the gym, especially when they're asking the same question over and over again. Are you open at spring break? Are you open at spring break? Are you open at spring break? Yes, that's why I'm answering the phones. <laughs> We're open. It's also on our email. It's also on our Facebook page. It's also on the door. We also got a flyer and last week. Yes, we're open. <laughs> if you are getting the same phone call over and over and over again, that's a clue. Gotta find another way to get that information out to the parents. It takes seven contacts before someone in this current environment remembers that, oh, there's even an issue, let alone what they told you. <laughs> it takes seven touches. So we try to do that in as outside of a registrar way as possible, meaning we use flyers, emails, posters, Facebook, website, phone trees. We use all kinds of different things. Um, we really want to try and anticipate what information the parents need and are likely to miss. Like, are you open? It's for great. <clears throat> And there actually is a schedule on the website that has, as far as we know, everything that we know of that's going to happen in the gym at all the sites. So a, a lot of parents do use that. They do. They're starting to. Again, they're starting to hear it more and more from us. Oh, did you check our, our calendar online? Do you have a calendar online? Yes. Check it. And all of a sudden, they start to rely on that information, which is why it's so important that your information is kept fresh and current all the time, completely up to date. This is our information wall. This is where all of our basic flyers are kept. Um, one of the best compliments that we as a registrar hear about information is we have a flyer on everything. You want information about our development program? Here's a flyer. You want information about your playground? Here's a flyer. You know, in this age of electronics and laptops and smartphones, people still love paper. They want to be able to take the schedule, circle what days and times work, write out Sarah's music lessons so she can try and figure out, you know, all three of her kids, what they're doing at any given time so she can make sure that she's got the right information. Um, also being well organized as a front desk staff is really important. This is one of our front desk 
staff um, stations, we have got a flyer box up here. So we've got one of every flyer. If a parent comes in and they're not able to get to the information board, we've got the flyers right there. We want to make sure that we have everything we need to make a smooth, successful, fast transaction. We also keep all of our class flyers on the other side of this computer, so they're all in one neat area. We've got our flyers for all of the gyms up at all of the locations. Just because a family currently goes to our Ballard location doesn't mean they can't take classes at our Lake City locations. We really want to help cross-promote not only within our gym, but amongst all of our locations. The other thing that's really important about information is contrary to popular belief, we are not the most important thing in these parents' lives. They have got three kids, they're trying to do dinner, they're trying to worry about each one of their kids' athletic abilities, they're trying to work full time. Then trying to get the information from us should be the very easiest thing about their day. So we want to really encourage that. We use flyers email, Facebook, West, our SGA website, newsletters, and a phone system to communicate with people. We also use vinyl posters, which we'll talk more about. But we want, in all of our information that we put out to the customers, we want to be able to show them what we do, what we believe, what we offer, and what the benefits are to the child. Those are really important. So when the parent goes home and they're talking about it with that third group, the spouse that's at home that has no idea what's going on, they're able to explain why their child is doing this activity all just based off of a flyer. Yeah. How often do you send your newsletters out? Once a month. Once a month. Mm -hmm. And the newsletters are like fine. Yeah, all email. Yeah. And then your emails, do you have, um, is it just when needed, or do you have a monthly or It's of process? when needed. We have learned that because we do have so many families, like I said, we've got 1,400 kids enrolled. That's not the kids that are doing drop-in. That's not the kids that are doing birthday parties. That's enrolled in classes. So we do have to send out emails very often, but we're learning that they're starting to get spammed or put into the junk or bounced back. So we really want to be careful with what emails we do send out. We try to find that balance. We want to only send out one email that maybe has got six <coughs> bits of information, right? So they only have to get it once. But at the same time, if the email is too large, they're not going to read it. They're going to move right on to the next. So we really try to find that balance. And what we really try to do is just hit the bullet points in the email. Short, sweet, to the point, because we have other areas where they can get more detailed information, right? If you use an automated uh, uh, registration system like uh, Jack Rabbit or Studio Director or iClass Pro or something like that, usually if your email is getting bounced as spam, they will report to you which address is doing that and why. Yeah, we do go through quite often and make sure that all of our bad emails are taken out. Families also have the option within Studio Director, which is the program that we use, to be able to opt out of emails. What's interesting about that is that they will opt out and then they will be upset three months later because now they're not getting the information. They say, well, you opted out. They say, no, I didn't. Well, I didn't choose for you not to get your email. Sorry. Um, Facebook? Facebook? Oh, hi. Who looks after the communication? Is it the registrars or do you have a marketing? We have um, well, it's a little bit of everything. So we have somebody who is in charge of the website, who is also in charge like our IT guy, right? But then all the supervisors also are responsible for giving him the information and for checking the website to make sure that it's still up to date and accurate. Um, we also all have the ability to go online and to change our information, whether it's on Facebook or the website. So that way, if for some reason our IT guy is super busy, things don't get pushed aside. We're still able to keep things updated. Yes? Oh, I was just wondering, like, how do you run things? Are all the coaches, everybody can change things? Or is no, the just the supervisors, system? just the managers of each department. Like the manager of registrar? Mm -hmm. So we have got, the way that we do our coaching, we have it broken up into three different groups. We have our day, or typically our preschool age classes, and that's one supervisor. We have our evening, or our recreational kids, that's a second supervisor, and then we have our boys. That's just at our location. We also have our development at one of our other locations, and so each one of those groups of kids have one supervisor who's in charge of all of the coaches, who's in charge of the scheduling, 
So those supervisors we allow access. If we allow access to all of our coaches, it's going to be made up. So we do try to limit who has access. That said, all the coaches are on studio director putting in skills, putting in attendance, putting in promotion notes before they do registration. The coach says, okay, move Susan to level four, or Jack can't go, he has to stay where he is. So they all have access to Do you use iPads for that, or do they have office? Do you use iPads for that? Or do you have the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Every gym they can punch in for their timekeeping, they can do studio director, whatever metric they step up to. We are actually, speaking of iPads, we are, <laughs> I'm super excited about this. So we have a waiver form, right? I'm sure everybody here has a waiver form. I'm so tired of paperwork, I can't even stand it. So we are finding a way that we can actually do all of our waiver forms electronically, and we'll be using iPads for that. Does anybody here already do that? Do waiver forms online electronically? What? I want to know what programs do you guys use? It's not a program. It was built into our registration system. So okay. They, um, you can update your policies however you want, and the member needs to click to agree to all of the policies, and it's basically an electronic signature. So when the registration comes through, um, we have, we have them sign the waiver. And, and what do you, because studio directors. Studio directors are doing the same thing. Yeah, studio directors. Online registration. Studio. We're worried about people who walk up to your front desk. We have to read the card. So yeah. they read the waiver, yeah. and then they, yeah, so that everybody doesn't have another piece of paper on the waiver. So, so this card, they you read the waiver, waivers? you agree, and the box says they tick the waiver on our registration, you just tick the box, they read the waiver. Yeah. Yeah, the way it's them doing it. And then you have One a waiver, you have to keep track of that. Pardon we me? have, uh, what, 16,000 waivers from the past 15 years, all filed and ready to go. <laughs> 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 kind of get rid of that. Yeah, kind of eliminate the paper trail a little bit. Um, oh, back to Facebook. We do use Facebook for blurbs, information, camps are coming up, registration is coming up. We only started Facebook six months ago. Mm -hmm. Year ago, maybe. So I feel like we're still getting more and more people every time to look at it. Um, but people have smartphones. Same thing with our SGA website and our emails. I, I like that electronic version of communication because most people have smartphones. They're able to get that information at any point during the day. Um, we also have a phone system. We have a phone tree. Try if you do have a phone tree. The best advice I can give you is keep it as simple as humanly possible. We have one button, and they can get directly to us. Now, they can also have access to any of our coaches that have a phone. They can dial straight into their extension. Or we have a couple of boxes where we can put information. For example, we have our indoor playground schedule up there. We have our parents' night out and our holiday closures schedule. We have our business hours. So if they do want specific information and they don't need to talk to anybody, they can push a button, they can get the information. But if they do want to talk to somebody, they only have to push one button. If parents are already angry, and then they have to go through a five-minute phone tree, I don't want to talk to them at the end. They're going to be so much more angry because you're irritated. You're frustrated. I just want to talk to somebody. And so we, we try to keep it as simple as we really can. Um, vinyl posters are another way that we communicate with our families, mainly because they're cheap and they look really nice and they're really professional looking. Um, they're really great if you have permanent information. For example, wash your hands. It's a gym, it's gross, you should wash your hands. Our indoor playground rules never change. So we are able to get these. And these posters, like I said, I think they're like 40, 40 bucks and 50 bucks for the big one. So for how long you can use them and how nice and professional they look, they're really inexpensive. We also use them for camps. We have the same camps that run every year. So we just don't put the date on the posters, and then we're able to reuse them every year as it goes along. We also use notice boards and bulletin boards for communicating with our current customers. The notice boards, they're super simple. It's a whiteboard on PVC, but we are able to... PVC work. is plastic pipe. Thank you. <laughs> we are able to, when we do our birthday parties, we can write, happy birthday, Jack. Here's where you should go. When we have coaches that are out sick, we can write, Coach Sarah is subbing for Coach Tara in the B's class. So the coaches know immediately who they should be looking for, that their coach is out. And they're super lightweight, so we can move them to anywhere we need them to be in the gym. Who does the writing? Is it the registrar? Typically the coaches, the coaches. do the writing. Um, for like this
this is birthday party stuff, and so the supervisor of the birthday parties writes the names down. Um, but for the subbing, we, yeah, it's typically the coaches who do it. Do you at the desk always know about who's subbing for who? Uh, yes, every day. We have a laminated piece of paper that has all the subbing because, again, when a parent checks in with us, if we tell them that they're going to go in with Coach Katie, they get up to the floor and Coach Katie's nowhere to be found, we look like an idiot and they're frustrated because now they have to come back up to us. They have no idea where they're supposed to be going. So we do want to make sure, yeah. But do you, just on that whole subbing thing, mm -hmm. how do you ensure that your coaches inform you of who's subbing? Uh -huh. The supervisors are in charge of that. So the supervisor comes up, they write down on our little piece of paper up at the front desk. So then the supervisor has to manage the coaches. Mm -hmm. the because, yeah, because the coaches have to communicate with the supervisor that and they're this, absent. Does the supervisors have issues with the coaches actually communicate with them on something? Um, I'm sure everybody here has the same issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who's coming in because all of a sudden it's like, well, so it's over there. We write them up. What happens is that uh, we have what's called a sub sheet. Person who knows that she is going to be gone puts it usually in the coach's area looking for somebody to sub on her thing. Yeah, we do the same thing. And so then, the so the supervisor knows right at that point that Susan is going to go. Also, in the HR system, they if they're applying for paid time off, then they have to go in through there, and that notifies the supervisor that Janet's going to want to go. Yeah, that doesn't exist for more profits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and the other thing too is if our coaches, we for, for a little while in the past, we were having issues with coaches not telling the supervisor, just simply not showing up and calling in their little bestie at the gym to come in and sub their class for them. That got old real fast, and we started writing them up and docking their pay if they are not able to show up on time and participate in their class. Mm -hmm. So if somebody phones in sick, they can't go to the board and say, mm -hmm. so the supervisor then would. Exactly. Board. And if they call in sick, they are responsible for finding their own steps, but they have to get permission from their supervisor first. So it still can't be, I woke up puking and I'm not going to come in. We understand that people get ill, or you've had a couple of people get in car accidents. Luckily, nothing too serious, but enough that they weren't able to participate in classes that day. So we want to make sure that we have a way to get a coach to be able to fill in for them. We also use bulletin boards. Yes, is there a hierarchy? Like if I want my friend to coach for me, but the other person has more seniority, that's for a shot at all relief. So all our relief has to be approved by the front office because there's that hierarchy. Or we do not have a hierarchy. You don't. No, we have cover for anybody providing you're the right level to coach that class. Exactly. So that's where the key is. If you are qualified to coach a B's class, which is two and a half to three year olds, it's the first class without mom or dad. So they're basically cats that you're trying to herd through the gym. Not everybody's qualified to teach that class. Now, if, worst case scenario, there is nobody qualified who is available to sub, then we will try and find the next best situation. Um, oftentimes, us registrars, like I was a coach. I was a coach for many years. So sometimes I have to go out and coach class now. It doesn't happen very often because we have enough reliable staff who are able to sub for each other. Would you suggest that the registrars do have coaching courses? Yes and no. Okay, so here's my philosophy on it. It is super helpful if a registrar knows gymnastics. The issue we had in the beginning when I first started being a registrar was that I was always the backup for the coaches. So I would get pulled off of the desk constantly to coach. And then what good am I? Now I'm not answering the phone. So as long as you have in place that the registrar is here to be a registrar, that is her shift. She's not going to be a sub. Now, if it's a shift where somebody else is up at the front desk and you need me to come in, absolutely. I think it's a good idea. But you have to be really strong in your belief that registrars are important. Registrars are not just somebody hanging out up there collecting a paycheck who should be coaching classes, you know, doing revenue generating hours. We are revenue generating hours, and we do have them. They're just very different than coaches. But I do think that having coaches that have a gymnastics background, or at least have been trained in what gymnastics is, is important because then you're more able to sell it to the parents, right? You're able to convince them of why it's an amazing class or why this skill can't be taught at the level one level. Uh, we also use bulletin boards for communicating with parents. We try really hard not to put up random pieces of paper all over the gym. 
looks trashy. It looks unprofessional. But we do have information. We have information for classes that is really only relevant this one day. I don't want to make a whole poster or a whole sign just for that one day. So we created bulletin boards, and we have one for each portion of the gym. So that way we can put up that individualized information, have it still be professional looking, and have the parents know where to go for it. For example, we have a day program for it. So all of our preschool age kids know, and the parents know, this is where you go to get the most current and up-to-date information. We have an activities board, which is our camp, parents' night out, birthday parties. All of the most up-to-date information there gets tagged up there. Some of the most important things that we put out notices for sales in our pro shop, when and how and where registration is going to be happening, um, ads for any new activities that we're going to be doing, and again, sub-information when we're doing things on those notice boards. I think that registration thing is important to get to the mother's attention as far in advance as you can, because it's harder for them to <coughs> We have a week where you can keep your class, your time and day that you want automatically. But next week, you can move to a different time. And the week after that, it's all open in a moment. So the mom who misses that first two weeks and then discovers her class is gone and she now has to change her schedule, she's going to be really irritated. Mm -hmm. She needs to be told seven times that registration is <laughs> Um, one of the last, oh yeah, sorry, so just on registration, is that how you do it? You like, save your spot, change your spot? We do. And a new registrant? Mm -hmm. So we do a three week registration process. The first week you get a whole week to keep your same spot. You can sign up on Monday, you can sign up on Saturday, it doesn't matter, your spot is guaranteed in the class. The second week is what we call transfer week. That's when we allow kids who are currently enrolled but maybe need to change days, or need to move up a level, or want to change times, that's where they can get moved around. So they're still getting some priority over our outside customers. And then the third week, and from the third week until we have the session, really is when we do open enrollment. So we allow you to sign up at any time during the school year. If you do sign up in the beginning, of course you'd pay the full 13-week price. If you sign up halfway through the session, you'd pay the prorated price. Are you using online registration or emails? Both. And you're able to manage your own line and Because it's all one system. And um, in the next section, I actually I'll show you some slides of our studio director that we use. But the parents see the exact same program that we see when they sign up online. So everything is up to the second. Do you do yeah. registration over the phone? We do? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We do registration online, over the phone, or in person. And this is part of your relationship with that customer. Days and times in a woman's, a mother's schedule are very important. And so you have to, you know, you make a point. We're going out of our way to give you the time and day you want in the next session. And if you want to change, here's a time just for you. After that, we have to sell the slots. But you've made a point of supporting that relationship with that customer by giving them special times to enroll. And we'll talk more about registration. I think it's after lunch. We'll get more to that. Um, lastly, um, another talking about registrars and they cost money, right? Another way to help increase your revenue is approaching <coughs> registrars are in charge of ordering the leotards, making sure they look nice, selling the leotards, making sure your inventory is correct. There are two different ways that you can make money in your pro shop. One is items that you purchase. We, in our gym, call that aerial apparel. So I have gone out, I have said that I want this particular style from this particular company, and I'm going to buy 10 of them at each size. There's also consignment leotards. Does anybody here already do consignment leotards? Okay, so consignment leotards are all still brand new. And at least in our gym, parents oftentimes get confused because you hear consignment shop, which is where you go and get used clothing, okay, fine. But in leotard terms, consignment simply means that the company is selling or is giving you a bunch of leotards. You do not get to choose the style of the fabric. You can oftentimes choose how many you want at the bike tart versus how many you want at the leotard. You can often choose that you want 35 child extra smalls, five smalls. You can choose your sizes. 
But then they send you whatever stock they happen to have. They give you a certain amount of time to sell as much as you can. At the end, you send back what you don't sell. And then you only are charged for the items you do sell. It's a really nice way to increase your revenue without having a whole bunch of money put away in your inventory. The only downfall is you don't get to control what inventory you do get. So some of the leotards are just awful. They're just ugly. And oftentimes there will be three friends that all want the same leotard and they all want it in different sizes. I don't have that. Some of the companies we do use will allow me to call and say, hey, do you happen to have two more of these and these two sizes? Can you send them to me? But not every company is available to do that. Is there a price difference between the two? Yes. Typically, consignment leotards are less expensive um, because we are not having to mark them up as high. Um, it kind of depends on the companies you use as well. We've got at our location five different companies that we use for consignment. And we really have basically stopped all of our aerial apparel ordering. We do some for our team Leos and shorts and things like that. But leotard wise, we've really moved away from that. Um, our leotards run anywhere from $25 to $38 a piece. And what's your markup on that? Uh, that is the that is the price that we sell to the customers. So we pay anywhere from nineteen to twenty five dollars a leotard. Our goal is to mark them up at least fifty percent, so that if we do ever want to do a sale, we are still going to be making a profit, right? I've stopped using companies like GK. I only do their consignment because their leotards are so expensive right now. They're wanting me to charge fifty and sixty dollars a leotard. <laughs> I wouldn't pay that. I can't imagine. We do have some families that are very well off and probably would, but it makes it, I, I just I don't feel comfortable selling a little thing like this for sixty dollars. So uh, that. <laughs> um, any questions about what we've talked about so far? Um, again, our goal is to have somebody dedicated up at the front desk who can answer questions who can show the parents not only are we a good gym because we have good coaches and we have good skills we're trying to teach the kids, but we also are a good gym because we know how to run a business. We know how to make sure that we are going to be successful. If we're successful, we're going to be around a lot longer to help instill in your kids that we're going to be there for them. So. Yes? In your office, how many people do you um, I'm sorry, how many people are up there doing registrar work? Yes. Oh, all yeah. the different things. All the different things in there, so in your office. Um, you know, in our front desk, we really only just have one or two registrars at a time. The, we have a back office where we have all of our bookkeeping, our owner, That's HR. State, HR, accounting, all that is done mm -hmm. in, with just three other people. And they handle the entire company. So. That's really one of the benefits of growing the size, that you can now handle all those issues that are emerging in the background, real estate, taxes, HR, for, uh, for a larger base. Okay, for, in, in, in the front desk, you only do the register mm -hmm. and that. That's it. Okay, and we try right to keep it so that there's only one or two people up there at the front desk. Again, registrars, you do have to pay money, so we do try to keep the staffing somewhat thin thin enough that we are able to still be able to make a profit with what we're doing, but we also don't want to have one person up there with 15 people in line. Again, that's just going to aggravate the parents. So we try to base our staffing off of when our busiest times are. If we have a super busy day, then it changes every session. One session Monday's busy, the next session Friday's busy, but we will try and have two staff members there at that point. Yeah. So how do you, sorry. Um, what's the difference in pay scale between, say, your your manager for your registrar okay. and then um, the rest of the people that you have filling in for that nine to nine time period? So we do all of our pay on something called the compensation sheet. So everything is based off of what you're able to accomplish for the gym. Um, I would say typically anywhere between ten and seventeen dollars an hour is pretty average. Um, but Later again, on today, we're going to go through a compensation sheet so you can see how people are. Paid. Yeah, the more things you do for the company, the more training you have, the more certificates you have, the higher your pay is. Did you have a question? Yeah. I can ask you, what controls do you put around cash? 
Um, how do you mean? So if people think cash mm -hmm. for their class or enrollment or yeah. do you have is it a dual control mechanism where one person counts it, one person banks it, um, or is it solely under one person? Solely onto one person. Um, that being said, we do have some double checks we put into place. For example, whoever um, closes at night counts up all the money. We don't do the deposit until the next day. So we do the deposit in the morning for the night before. So then whoever does the, more, the deposit in the morning is able to check and make sure that the money balances from the night before. So it's like so a distributor can print out what should be what there. Should be that. Okay. Or your cash register prints out what, what should, should be there. there. Okay. Now that's not to say we don't have people who are thieving and who just don't put the money into the till. I mean, we have that issue. Do you? I had that issue. Yeah. Yes, um, the middle of our day is the most quiet. So we try not to have two people staffed in the middle of the day. That being said, because I do work the desk and I'm also the, re the director of everything, I oftentimes am like a second person there. But the middle of the shift or the middle of the day is when I'm back at my desk trying to get through all of the scheduling, trying to do all of my director work. But our goal is to have one person who opens and one person who closes. Um, and right now we have two registrars, full time, both working 40 hours a week, and we're doing Monday through Sunday. So we're working every single shift. So you started this, what, uh, at 9 o'clock? Mm -hmm. So the first part, and we vary it. Um, the other registrar and I, neither one of us want to work the entire weekend shift, so we try to give each other times off. So like on Friday, if it's my shift, I work the entire Friday. So I work 9 to 7 the entire day. But then I get Saturday and Sunday off. The next, or, and then my other registrar, well, she would get Friday off, and then she would work Saturday and Sunday. So we do try to vary it. So some days maybe you're working seven days or seven hours, some days you're working nine, some days you're working five, but you're really able to tailor it to whoever your registrars are and whatever their shifts need. As long as every hour is covered, we're able to be pretty flexible in our shifts. And you don't use any volunteer parents? Not for really. any of that? Nope, we do all of it ourselves. So if you get an hour to nine hours to over over time paid Typically not because then you're only working maybe four days a week. Or your like our Saturday and Sunday shifts are very small. So you'll do a nine hour shift, but then on Sunday you'll only do a four hour shift and so it kind of balances out. Okay. So that means so one week you only get four. Yeah, you actually have to work more than 40 hours between the beginning of the work week and the end of the work week. If you, no matter what you do on any given day, you work 40 hours on one day, and it would be okay. Yeah, and we, you know, the other woman and I, her name is Rachel, she's got a family, she's got a husband, she's got a child. Her schedule needs to be a little bit more flexible. I have a husband, I don't have any kids. My, my schedule is pretty wide open. So we try to tailor it, and we will switch it up every session because I like variety. So one session I will work four tens. The next section, or the next session, I will work five days a week, no weekends. The next session I will work seven days a week, but I'm working, you know, five or six hours a day. So it just kind of depends on what we need for that session. Any other questions that I can answer about being a registrar? Well, this whole function will come up more over. Um, just your, just a thought here. People who register online. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a real issue with parents want a certain slot, but their kid's not that level. They register in the wrong. How do you monitor that if they're doing it online in their own time? And what is your follow-up to make sure that it's placed in the right place? So, we have two ways of doing that. First of all, we use Studio Director, right? So, Studio Director has some mechanisms in it, like you have minimum and maximum age requirements, which is helpful. Two of the downfalls. Um, it doesn't stop a boy from signing up in an uh, all-girls class. That's kind of a problem. So we try to put it in the title, right, to help people see your boys probably shouldn't be signed up in a level 1A, which is a girls-only class. Um, the other thing is it doesn't have a mechanism to prevent kids from signing up in too high of a level, besides the prerequisite, which is just written down at the bottom. But I get an email for every single person that signs up online. And it takes me about 10 minutes every day to go through every one of those emails just to double check, make sure, yes, they're signed up in the right level. If they're not, then I call the family um, and I tell them 
based on the note that your coach has put in the family notes section, your child is allowed to be in this level. That's not the level you signed up for. But we do have these times for that level that could work for you, and then we'll move them around as necessary. We don't have too many parents who try to put their kids in too high of a level skill-wise. It's typically the parents that try to put their kids, their small kids, in too high of a level age-wise. You know, well, my, my two and a half year old, she's really good. She's exceptional. <laughs> We're going to put her on the three year old. Absolutely not. And we are very firm on the ages. Because it's a snowball effect. Parents talk to each other. Oh my word. Well, you know, Susan Q over there, she's only two and a half. Why is she in my chompers class? And then once they get moved up once, you know, we typically say it takes about a school year for the kids to move from one skill level to the next. Some kids go earlier, some kids take longer, but that's pretty average, it's about a school year. But if they get moved into a higher level, or they put themselves in a higher age class too soon, now every single session they're going to be fighting you to try and get up into that next higher level, because now they've been in that class for a session. Now they've been in that class for a whole school year. If you start out too young, it's just going to be a fight all the way through. So in your, um, the program that you guys use, it must allow you then to set parameters for um, online registration. If, if it's week one of, of registration, Absolutely. you must be able to set those parameters that only those individuals that are currently enrolled in that specific class can. So register. we can, that's not the parameter that we can use, but it's something similar. We have passwords, and so we will password protect the class, so then we can give our current customers the password, and um, we give it's class specific password. So that way, if you are signed up in the Monday Level 1A at 4.30 for the winter session, now with registration for spring, we are only going to give you the password for the Monday Level 1A at 4.30. It's the second week when we go into priority, we leave the passwords on. Because it's still, you can only sign up for the class you have the password for. So if you're wanting to change, now you have to call us or now you have to come in. Um, we open it up, we take out all of the passwords in the third week. So that way, anybody who wants to sign up for any class as is appropriate for them, right? And your parents that want to sign up for how many sessions do you run in a year? We do four sessions a year. And your parents say, okay, September 1, I want to sign up for all four sessions, and they are allowed to do that, or? We have, we've tried in the past to get something like that going. We don't have very many parents that are interested in doing that, just because it is, it's a big chunk of money. And you never know what your life is going to be like. Your life could change in three weeks or in six months or whatever. It's, it's a long time, but we do try to keep our classes the same throughout the entire school year. So if they do sign up for that Monday Level 1A at 4.30, they have the ability to stay in that class the entire school year. And our goal with our coaches is to ask them to commit for the entire school year. That way the kids aren't having to change up halfway through. So that... Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I had finished the thought. Um, so that 1A, by, yeah. by the second session, that whole group could have advanced to the... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. ...to be here. I don't know what you're... Yeah, but we offer we offer typically anywhere between six and nine classes happening at a time in the gym all at one time. And so they all rotate around each other. So if the kids are capable of moving up to the next level, then in transfer week, hopefully we would have a level two at the exact same day, class, and time. So then they can still have their Monday at 4.30. Or well, we convert the level one into level two. Right? That happens too. That happens too. Is that being Yeah, go ahead. So does your program allow for we all have parents who want their kids at the same time but it's, because it's convenient for them. So I try to schedule a long that need right. is critical. But they try to get their six year old son in the ten year old classes that doesn't want to lie about the kids' age no. to get them <laughs> in that class because their convenience is more important than what we offer. Absolutely. So does your program the studio director, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with does that is there a way to make sure that, that doesn't happen? Um, the only real way is the birthday that they give us. Okay. If they're a liar, then they're a liar. And it's the, it's the birthday they put on the waiver form, which means okay. that you have now signed a document stating okay. that is your child's birthday. Okay. All right. So the convenience factor is huge for our families. And we are trying really hard to convince them that what is convenient for you is not always what's best for your child. Right? Putting your four-year-old in a two-year-old class because it's convenient, it's not going to do your four-year-old any good, and they're not going to want to continue in gymnastics. So our goal is really to try and explain to them what the benefits are by being in the appropriate class. And by scheduling our classes such that we offer a wide range of classes at every time slot so that they can have their two or three kids all in at the same time and in the appropriate level. And yeah. here's another aspect of developing that relationship. We 
we actually ask people not to sign up online if they're just new to the company. Come in for an assessment. It's not a sales job. We just want to look at your child's personality, their strength, their flexibility, their interest, and see if we can find a good match for them. And you have to get the mother off the schedule thing, because that's what she's thinking when she comes in first time. You know, I have, a, I have an opening on Thursday. I want it at 4, and I want 4 o'clock on Thursday. Well, you have to get her thinking about the needs of the child. We might go over this at a later date, but what is your policy about them coming in, or your policy about coming in and trying a class before they sign up for it? We, we do absolutely talk about that. Yeah. They, we do go over that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can talk about it now. Um, we offer two things. We offer an assessment, which means that they come in, they do about 15 minutes or so with the coach. We have very specific times that are set aside. Um, currently, at our location, we have our... Um, site supervisor who does it. She checks out their flexibility, their coordination, their strength, a couple key skills on each event, and then she talks with the child and their family to figure out what are they really looking for. Does the child just want to be in a recreational setting but the parent is really pushing for team? How can we find a class that's going to suit them and keep them in the gym and keep them feeling pride in what they're doing and keep them feeling successful in what they're doing? Once they have the assessment, the coach then comes up and lets the front desk know what level would be appropriate. And she tries to give us three different options. We have three different specific tracks in our gym. We have our recreational, we have our recreational competition, and then we have a competition team. So she tries to give us the level in each one of those tracks. That way, no matter what the parent wants, we know exactly what levels are going to be appropriate for them. Then we offer something called the risk-free trial, which means that you can come in, you can do one whole hour-long class, See how you like it. If you like the class and you sign up, then you pay for the session as part of, or you pay for the class as part of your session. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the trial class is complimentary. And we allow that one per um, type of class. So if your child has been in a recreational class for four years and they're thinking they want to try the competition class, we'll still let you do another trial in that class because the program is so different. We want to make sure you're feeling successful and excited about that class particularly because we don't offer any credits or refunds. So do you just have specific days that they can do the complimentary class? or Any class that has space available. We have safety numbers, a uh, kid to coach ratio that we do not go over, which you know is really important. You know, We were talking earlier about if a child hasn't paid and they're out on the floor, we will pull them off the floor because chances are that class is already full. And now you are, by having that extra kid out on the floor, now you're putting all of the class A at risk. You're gonna make, ensure that the class is not gonna be as successful because the coach now has extra kids they have to deal with. We wanna make sure that we don't go over those numbers. So, big spot, if a class has space available and you wanna do a risk-free trial, you're more than welcome to do so. We do ask that they sign up ahead of time so that we can keep track of it all. Do you charge for that as well? No, assessment is free. Yeah. You mentioned no credit, and I understand that. Okay. Yeah. No refunds. Absolutely not. So we do no credits or refunds. Um, we and we'll talk more about this later. But we make the commitment to the gym to the gymnast. We expect that they're going to make the commitment back to us, uh, and that's something that we state very clearly in all of our documentation. So that way, there is no confusion. And when the parents are signing up over the phone or online or in person, before we run their credit card, we make sure to tell them there are no credits or refunds, but if your schedule changes or if your child loses up a level, you're more than welcome to transfer days and times in the middle of the session as long as your space is available. Yeah. Do you allow makeup classes at all? I hate no, makeup. Can my child do a makeup? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So our policy is that we allow two makeups per session. If you don't make them in the session, you lose them. However, makeup sucks. Our classes are full. We yeah. do not have a lot of space for makeups. Makeups are super distracting because now all of a sudden these five kids that have been with this one coach all session, now they have this new little person who's talking and being all Twitter painted and doesn't know what's happening. So our goal is to move in a direction where the only makeups are, if they're under the age of five, they do something called indoor playground, which is basically kind of like at the park, right? So the parent goes out on the floor with their really little kids, they get full run of the gym for an hour, coach supervised. Or they do something called open gym, which is for our older kids, we do it just on the weekends, um, it's not as structured as a class. That's our goal. We haven't gotten there yet. There's a lot of pushback for makeups, which is funny because most other sports don't offer makeup. So why do they? I really don't want to. I'm so tapped out. Yeah. What about injuries and medical notes, things like that? Do you then do refunds or credit? We do. So if there is an injury, our policy states that if there's an injury, 
The day that you bring us the doctor's note, we will drop you from the class and give you a refund for all the remaining classes. Now, if you were injured and it takes you six weeks to bring us a doctor's note, you don't get those six weeks back. We could resell that class for those six weeks. So from the date that you bring us the doctor's note, and it's not, hey, my kid broke their arm, can I just have a refund? No, we need an actual note from the doctor stating what the injury is and when they're able to come back. We are also, we haven't gotten to this point yet, but we're talking about trying to make a policy where they need to give us a note from the doctor saying they're ready to come back. We want to make sure that they're fully healed before we allow them back into the gym. Let's let's hold off. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, your online registration and you're talking about the signed waiver. So I assume they yeah. sign up online, which reserves in the spot. Then they come in and on the first day of class, they sign up. That's our goal. It oh, does okay. actually. You right. cannot. So you, until check. you check that off, you can't sign up. Right. But Lisa, out of her abundance of caution, <laughs> <laughs> wants paper because oh, when, I do. It okay, comes, so when it comes to the crunch, there's nothing like pulling out a piece of paper and saying. Can't you just print it out? <laughs> we can't. So the waiver right now that's on studio director is solely our liability. Gymnastics is inherently dangerous. Your child may die, break something, blah 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 blah. You understand all of that. You don't hold us responsible, right? I want a piece of paper that on our, and I should have brought our waiver form, I didn't even think about it. Um, true. On our waiver form, we also have a, a box that they have to check, or they have to initial that says, I understand that they're under credit to refunds. I understand that you only get two. I have medical insurance because we require every child in the gym to have medical insurance. Whether it's from the state, we have. Yeah. We do. Yeah. There, yeah. Um, I said there are only two makeups. I understand. One of our gyms had one for parking because they were having a real issue with people parking in other yeah. businesses' spots. So, could you just put that in your online waiver and have make them take off those boxes and get That ready is our goal. At this point, studio director is still working on pulling all of that together. Um, right now, all they have is a box with a little check mark that says all of whatever. I mean, you can put whatever information you want in there, but if all of a sudden it is a page long document, they're just going to scroll to the end and check the box. I want to know that they understand our policies. And Eventually, and we'll talk about this later, but it's important that you understand why the policies are in place so that you can properly explain it to the customer and help them see not only the benefit for us, but the benefit to them of having these policies. But we're going to wrap things up because Mr. Sweeney's ready. Well, we could have a coffee break. Yeah, let's uh, get a coffee break.